Very good. Step number one, isolate the radical. Isolate the radical. Get it all by itself. Step number two, square root, or sorry, square both sides. Square both sides. And I'm going to put two little hints under one that I'm going to do in red. So it's up to you if you want to do them in red. And this will make more sense once we do the example, but I'm just going to put the note of brackets. Because you're going to want to put brackets around everything. And the second note is one squared on each side. And I'm going to put just the little exponent of two rather than writing out squared. One squared on each side. And I'll explain that more really when we get down to some of the other examples. One squared, so it's a little two on each side. Step three, if you do step one and two and you still have a radical in your equation, it just means you need to repeat steps one and two. It doesn't mean you've done something wrong, but sometimes we'll see in the later examples, like down here when there's two radicals, sometimes we need to do steps one and two twice. So if a radical remains, repeat steps one and two. If a radical remains, Repeat steps one and two. If a radical remains, repeat steps one and two. Step four, isolate the variable. Isolate the variable. And I'm going to grab red for step five because he's the most important and he's the one you're going to forget out of all of them. And then I'm going to star him. If I had some glitter glue, like I would throw that on there too. Maybe some neon lights, I would put that around it because it's the one step you're going to forget. Linear equations from grade nine and ten, they're kind of boring equations, they're straight lines. Which, by the way, from now on, please don't say straight line because what's a non-straight line? A, that's a curve. So to a mathematician, lines are straight. It's just a line, right? And you spent a whole unit, actually two units in grade 10, graphing lines. Remember slope, intercept form, all that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, the graphs are kind of boring, right? They're just lines. There's not much going on. You're going to find out, actually, once we get to a later unit, is all kinds of graphs are kind of funky except for lines. Lines are boring. Well, these radicals are actually pretty funky graphs, which we'll see later. But what that means is that sometimes when you solve the equation, you get an answer. But when you go to check it, it actually doesn't work in the equation. That never, ever happened with linear. We were like, check your answer. But it always worked that the answer, if you did the question correctly, worked. We're going to meet a series of equations. I call them special equations. This is our first special equation you're going to need. There's three types in total we're going to meet through grade 11 and grade 12, special equations. And they're special because sometimes you get out an answer, phi, for example, but you substitute it back in and you do the work and it actually doesn't work. So you always need to check a special equation, because if you don't, you have your answer and you think it works, but if you don't check it, it actually doesn't work. So step number five is check your answer. By substituting, check your, an your answer, not for answer, your answer, by substituting into the original equation. equations, and then we'll call them functions, which is exciting because it has the word fun in it. We'll talk about that later. Check your answer by substituting into the original equation. Like 90% of the time your answer is going to work, but there's that little 10% time it's not, which we'll do an example and I'll show you what happens. And you better believe on the exam we're going to pick one that doesn't work to make sure you're going back and checking your answer. We need to practice this this year because this becomes way more important next year. You're going to have tons of equations where the answers don't work. And if you don't get in the habit of checking, 
you're going to lose a mark every single time. Again, linear, not a big deal. If you did the question right, they're always going to work because they're lines. These kind of equations are special because they're not always going to work. So I'm going to do example one right beside, and I'm going to number it with the same steps. So when you look back, you can see what was step number one. What I need to do first is get this whole root of x by itself. Not just the x yet, but the root of x needs to be by itself. So I need to get rid of that coefficient of 3. What's the opposite of multiplying something by 3? So I'm going to divide each side by 3. So on the left-hand side, the 3's cancel, which give me my root x. And on the right-hand side, we get 2. That's step number 1, just get the root by itself. Step number two, we're going to square both sides. Why? Well, think way back to Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared? And you put in your numbers, and you get c squared equals 100, for example. And we were like, how do you get rid of a squared? What's the opposite of squaring something? And what did you do to get rid of that c squared? You square rooted. Well, this we're just going backwards. What's the opposite of square rooting something? Squaring something. Now, you're going to want to put brackets on each side. And that's not so important in this example, but it's going to be in later examples. That's why I made the note brackets. And you can only put one squared on each side. And I'll tell you why again in a later example why I say that. But if you put one on the left, you put one on the right. You can't put two on the left and one on the right. That's not balancing. So that is step number two, square root to get rid of. So x equals 4. Do we still have a radical? So step three doesn't matter in this case because we have no more radical. Step four is isolate the variable. It's already done, so x equals 4. I'm going to do red pen to do number 5. And 5 I always do off to the side, and I don't know why. It's just the way my brain works. I like the main equation solving on the left, and I like the checking on the right. I don't care where you do it as long as you do it. All we're going to do is go all the way back to the original question before I did anything to it and sub in our value that we have and check that it works. What do I mean by work? It means I worked on the left, I worked on the right, I make sure the two sides are equal. When you're checking, you can't start moving stuff from side to side. That's solving. So all I want to do is calculate, evaluate the left, evaluate the right. Bed mass, what do I do first? Brackets, there's no brackets. What do I do second? Exponent. Well, a root is an exponent. Remember way back in grade 10, you talked about the root of x being x to the 1 half? Kind of remember that? Anyway, just know the root is the exact same thing as an exponent. So I do it first. So I'm going to leave my 3, and I'm going to evaluate the square root of 4, which we know is 2. Now I'm going to do the multiplication. What's 3 times 2? And I get 6 equals 6. What does that mean? It means this is a correct answer. If I got anything else, 5 equals 6, negative 12 equals 6, a half equals 6, negative 6 equals 6, what that tells me is this does not work as an answer. So as long as these two are exactly the same, good to go. If they're not the same, not an answer. Yes, ma'am. The two here? I square rooted 4. That was the easiest basic kind of question you're going to see. Let's step it up a little bit. This is where you're going to grab your paper. And you probably already have your title. Please tell me you already have your title. Because we've been doing this for like five weeks now, maybe four weeks. Please have your title down. What I love about radical equations is there's no exceptions. These steps are going to work every single time. And if there were exceptions, I would tell you right off the bat. These five steps are going to get you through every single question. And usually, you get to skip qu step number three. Step number one, radical by itself. So I need all of this by itself. I need that 4 gone and that minus 5 gone. I need to get them to the other side. What's the opposite of subtracting 5 from something? Adding it. I have a coefficient of 4. What's the opposite of multiplying something by 4? Dividing it by 4. That is step one, get the radical by itself. Step number two, square both sides. I need to put brackets. I'll tell you later why that's important. And I need to put one on each side. If I put one on the left, I put one on the right. 
What's the purpose of the squaring? Why is that step number two? To get rid of the radical. It's the only way to get rid of a radical is to square it. So if you do something and it doesn't get rid of it, oh, and I just wrote it again. Don't laugh at me, righties. <laughs> Lefties, my whiteout ran out this morning and I thought I was out and I had none. I was like in crisis mode, but I had three and I was stocked up. <laughs> Two squared. That's step number two, square each side. Step number three is just if there happens to be a radical that's left, we repeat. We'll do an example like that in a second so you can see. Don't need to do three. Step number four is get the x by itself. So I need this guy all by himself. See, that doesn't work as well in whiteout. Now it's all smudgy. How do I get rid of the plus one? Minus one, so x equals three. What does it? We don't know. Step five is just grabbing the main equation, going back and subbing in our value. I'm going to do under the root first, so 3 plus 1 is. I'm going to do the square root next, so keeping my coefficient of 4. What is the square root of 4? Multiplication comes next, 4 times 2. 8 minus 5. What does it mean 3 equals 3? x minus 3 is an answer. Uh, x equals 3, I should say, is an answer. I want you, with this example, is to pick out the five steps, and I want you to number them off to the side. Write down a 1 where we did step number 1. Write down a 2 where we did step number 2, et cetera, et cetera. Step number one took us down to here. Step number two took us to here. Step three didn't need to do. Four was getting down to the three. And step five was checking on the other side. Questions so far? Show me your thumb. How are you feeling so far on this? I'm getting it. I'm kind of getting it. Good. Let's do number three. Step number one, isolate the radical. Well, what do I do when there's one on each side? Well, what did you do last year when there were x's on each side? You died and gave up and crumpled up your paper and curled up in a ball. And then when you got out of your ball, we were like, no, no, we just moved the x's to one side and the variable or numbers to the other. We're going to do the same thing here. So move all radicals to one side. Just like you were if this was just x and there was no radical there. You'd take all the x's to one side, numbers to another. I'm going to take this two radical x to the left, and what's the opposite of adding two root x? So I'm going to subtract two root x. So what's three root x minus two root x? This is what we did two days ago with adding and subtracting. It's one root x. And I'm going to take the negative 4 over to the right-hand side. What's the opposite of subtracting 4? Adding 4. What's 1 plus 4? Step number 2. Brackets, 1 on each side. Root of x squared. 5 squared. Step 3. Step three, do we need to do it? Step four, 
isolate, don't need to do it. Now we're up to step five. Go back to the original question. Take out x, put in 25. Notice you have to go back to the original question. You can't just jump up a step and put it into here. It's not enough. You have to go back to what the question was. Roots are first. What's the square root of 25? So I'm going to keep that 3, put in a 5, keep the negative 4. On the right-hand side, keep the 2, put in a 5, keep the plus 1. Multiplication comes first, so I need to do these two, on one on each side. 3 times 5. 2 times 5, 15 minus 4, 10 plus 1, conclusion, 25 is our answer. You'll notice I went back to the original question and I worked down the left and down the right. I didn't start moving stuff side to side. Moving side to side is solving, it's not checking. Checking, you have to work down the left, work down the right, make sure the two sides are exactly the same. Not this year. Number four. What is step one? This guy all by himself needs to get rid of that three that's hanging out in front. How do I get rid of the three? I heard divide and I heard subtract. Find it out. I meant this three out front. How do we get rid of him? So what's the difference between three plus a radical and three radical something something? Yeah, this would be a subtraction because I'm adding three and what's the opposite of adding three? Subtracting three. What would happen here on the right? Four once I combine it. Step number two. Square both sides, put your brackets, put one on each side. What happens on the left? Almost. Why? Why? But you're timesing the root by itself, not the radicand times itself. So 3x minus 1. And on the right-hand side? Step number 3. Nope, good to go. Step number 4. Get this x by itself. I heard someone say minus 1. Then I just heard someone say divide by 3. Any questions there? You notice I'm starting to write, not write down those kind of last couple steps because by grade 11 you should start to see how we're minusing 1, dividing by 5. If you need to write them, write them. Are we done? No, no these are special equations and special equations you have to check. Oh, how about in example number five we talk about that? What do I do with all this crap on the left? Where do I start? I'm going to start under the root first. Am I going to do that multiplication or the addition? Multiplication, multiplication first. So negative three times negative five. I'm just writing down what you're saying, by the way, so make sure you're checking it. Conclusion? 
Yay, it's an answer. Are you starting to see the same five steps over and over and over, usually skipping number three, which we'll get to when there is a number three? How are we doing so far? Are these fun? Like seriously, all this crap equals negative five? How does that happen? Math is magical. I'll just answer his question first, then I'll answer that. <laughs> Did I answer that by pointing? <laughs> but this doesn't have to equal negative five. They just have to equal each other. Um, did I always like math? I, I liked math. I didn't love math growing up. I had no intention of being a math teacher. What did I intend on teaching? Not art, not gym, gym no. <laughs> English. <laughs> nah. nah, I like science. It wasn't my favorite thing. Music, I, I was okay in music. I wasn't great, but I played instruments, but English. <laughs> Flute and berry sax. Somebody say history. <laughs> it's my history face. Keep going. French. French, high five. I want I want to be a French teacher. That was my original plan. So when you go to university education, you have to declare a major and a minor. So I knew French right away. I picked that. And then I was like, mm, minor, math, physics. I kind of liked them both. I didn't really have a preference. And that kind of, you know, well, there's more math teachers in a building. So I picked math. And then you have to take so many other courses. And there wasn't a lot I was interested in. So I double majored French and math. Still not planning to teach math. Graduated, like, yay, French teacher, I was all excited. My very first job was French immersion geography. I knew nothing. I read the book the night before, like dirt and mountains and who cares and clouds. I don't care. And my second position was math and French immersion social studies. Still didn't care. But then I got a math position, and then that's it. I would never teach French again. I'm all mathy now. I was, I was a good student, but I had to work. It didn't come naturally. But I, like, I was an 85 kind of student with work. I have a genius brother, like he's actually a genius, like an older brother, where he did nothing and got 100 and everything. That was not me. I had to work, especially in English and history. If I have to write an essay, I have to really work. I have to write it and come back and leave it and come back. It doesn't come naturally to me. So I was a good student, but I worked for it. It wasn't like I could just, yeah. My brother literally, first year calculus in university, took my bag instead of his, so he took my gym clothes to his exam, and I had his calculator. Wrote his calculus exam without a calculator, got 100%. What? Then there's me following that. That never happened. Never, ever. But I have friends, and he doesn't, so it kind of works out well. You know. He's an accountant. He's an accountant. Yeah, I have friends and personality, and he does not. Oh, there's a story in my school. Uh, number five. Which, let me tell you while you're writing this down, my little social studies uh, story. So I knew nothing, right? And so you know, there's a unit on government, so I'm reading, okay, how they open government, we have to talk about it. And they talk about carrying in the mace. And I think it's like mace, like security. <laughs> so I tell the kids, oh my God, the security's so tight when they open parliament, they have to carry mace. And I'm like thinking, well, that's weird. Like, we don't have like really hits on our prime minister. Like, we pie our prime minister, but we never, okay, well, that's weird. Then like at the end of the unit, we're watching a video on the opening of parliament. So I'm like, oh, like a mace, like a sword, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I told them they had to carry mace. <laughs> Ruined a little generation of children there. <laughs> but totally other story now. On the final exam, the essay question was, pick one of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and discuss how it impacts your daily life. And I had this girl, Samantha, I'll never forget her, wrote about the right to bear arms, which, number one, isn't Canadian, it's American. And she wrote, I have the right to bear arms. So if, if I won't, don't want to wear a sweater and I just want to wear a tank top, no one can make me put on a sweater. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's so sad. Kid you not. Kid you, and I taught her that. I taught her this. Right to bear arms. No one, no one can tell her to put on a sweater. She doesn't want to. Yay, Canada. Step number one. <laughs> Isolate the radical. Let's get rid of this five. Right to bear arms. I heard someone really quietly say negative three. Step two.
negative times negative. I heard two different answers, so five is out. Five, confirm. Divide by two. Divide by two. Do the radical first. What's two times five? And then I do the minus one right away. I do it all in one step. So we're gonna have root of nine. Root of nine. Three plus five. Uh-oh. Oh. What does that mean? What does it mean? Well, number one, we come here and we cross it out. That's how you show me that you understand it's not a valid answer. And it is called, if you peek on the notes already, an extraneous root. I know, it looks like it should be, but it... Because you checked it. It's an extraneous root is what it's called. It's an extraneous root. Um, you would probably lose a half mark for what you did to get the wrong answer, but if you checked it and your answer does not work, you would get the mark for knowing it's extraneous. Did that make sense? Anthony? No, it'll just say solve, just like this, and then you get down to the bottom, and this is how you show me you know it doesn't work. An extraneous root is a solution that does not work when you check it. It, it is, you just don't know enough yet to know why we call it that. Um, in unit seven, when we talk about what roots are. I was about to say, before they segue that one, is the reason it's called that will come more obvious later on in the course. You just need to know right now it's just called an extraneous root. Extraneous roots are going to come back all the way through. Oh, look, he's already peeking. All right. I think, I think it's unit seven now that he's turning to the book. Maybe not unit seven in the book, but unit seven we're doing, because we're doing some of them in a different order. The answer is the five with the cross out. It means there's no solution. You don't need to write that it's extraneous. You just need to hear those words and know later what I'm talking about. This is. What's the point of? Because how do you know at the start it was extraneous? Right? If we looked at this, we got answers for two, three, four. How do I know five was the one that didn't work? We don't know until we do it. Uh, oh, roots come up in chemistry a lot. They come up in biology. You don't know enough to know that yet. Can you trust me and I will come back to that before the end? It'll come up. Oh, wait, I don't want to go into six yet. I don't want to go into six yet. Because <laughs> it takes too long to dry. And then I always get impatient and I write over top and then it gets all gooey. I actually, I have them. I don't want to write six yet because I want to show you something on this one. I'm going to show you the wrong way to do this question. And it's going to make step sense what I said in step two. So you can write this down, you can not. This is completely up to you, but I'm going to show you what I see over and over and over. This is what I see over and over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, didn't I just miss step one? Absolutely, I did. What else did I do incorrectly?
And what's the golden rule of solving equations? What did we start preaching in grade eight? What you do to one side, you do to the other. Did I do the exact same thing to both sides? Someone is going to do this, and we're going to talk a lot about exam panic. And I know you've all been there either during a test or an exam when your brain goes clear and you just start to panic. And what's going to happen is you're just going to see a root, and you're going to remember what cancels a root. It's squaring, so I have to square everything. And then you're just going to start squaring all the pieces, and then you're going to get down to here, and then you're going to go on. Okay, that's why I made that note in step two, one on each side. You can't start squaring pieces of an equation. It doesn't work that way. No, no. I threw number six in because it came up a couple years ago and it was a test question that went horribly wrong and this math teacher would be like, but, but this is kind of a straightforward. So I put it in as an example just because it's a little bit weird for some kids. I don't know why. Step one. And this is where people panic because how do I isolate when there's two? Well, they already are isolated because one is on the left and one is on the right. So this is isolated. We've technically isolated this one or we've isolated this one. So now we go straight to step two, which is square both sides. Correct, only if you can combine them. Okay, okay now what? Oh, well, we just need to finish this one off. When we square, what happens? And then this caused mass panic because, well, there's X's on both sides. And I'm like, but wait, wait, you've been doing this since grade nine. This is just a regular linear equation now. How do we solve it? X is on one side, numbers on the other. I always bring X's to the left because I'm left brain, can't help it. How do I move a 2X? I subtract 2X. And what do I do with a negative 2X and an X? And then I'm going to take that negative 1 over to the right. And if it's negative 1, what happens? It turns out. Well, I'm going to get rid of that in the second step anyway. So, How do I get rid of a coefficient of negative 1? Oh, but I'm not done. Got to check it. Where do I check it? Because what's going to happen is people put it right back into this step. And they go, oh, negative, negative 4, 4. 4 equals 4. That's not checking. Where do we check? The question. Whatever the question was is where we go back and check. Negative 4, negative 1. Square root of negative 5. Square root of negative 5. Does not exist. Does not exist. Can't square root a negative. Okay. What about this side? Also equals the square root of negative 5. Does not exist even though they're equal, can I have something that does not exist? <laughs> so this is also an extraneous root. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. I can't magically make it exist. Does not exist. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, I'm not supposed to tell you this. I is an imaginary number, and it's equal to the square root of negative 1. What? So we actually say that I squared equals negative 1. That's where it comes from. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. So it's actually a lie when we say you can't take the square root of a negative. You can't in the real number system. But there's a whole other system you haven't met yet. It's kind of fun, a little bit. You're going to turn to your textbook. You're